Hi everybody, how are you all doing tonight on this Thursday night? Uh, my name is Susan Searle and we are going to do some yoga for Sun Water Spa. So this will just be a, a mixed level class. Obviously, you know, you just work at your own pace. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time tonight um, working on balance because uh, we're, we're sort of out of balance in our lives, in our world right now. And our yoga calls us to balance. You know, we do, we do both sides in every single pose. We do the, the right side and then we do the left side. So tonight we're going to work on some balance and hopefully create some inner balance through our practice. So I'm glad you're here today. Super excited for you to be here. Again, my name is Susan and come on back to your mat and just begin in child's pose. So you can have your knees together or you can open your knees apart and let your belly go through the center. They're both, you know, it's pretty much the same pose. Just want which one feels better in your low back and which one feels better in your shoulders. So you're just going to come on down and just let your forehead come to the ground. Take an opportunity to breathe into your back. Let the day come to a close. And then in your child's pose, really visualize your breath. Drawing in through the nose. Letting the breath come into your back, circle around your shoulders, it's another moment or two here in your child's pose. Letting your forehead down onto the ground helps to quiet your nervous system. So just taking this opportunity to prepare your mind and your body for your practice tonight. Gently lift yourself up and come over to a seated position. And just sit however is comfortable for you. So it might be legs crossed, you might sit on a pillow. If this is too much in your knees, go ahead and extend your legs straight out in front of you. But find a comfortable seat. Take a breath in and out. And let's draw our hands together at our heart center. And we'll begin our practice with one collective chant of Om. So while I can't hear you chanting Om, I know that you're sending out your energy. So take a nice big breath in. Exhale it all the way out. And then inhale for Om. Releasing your hands down on top of your legs. Drop your chin forward, just easy side to side, working out your neck. I'm going to take a few full neck rolls. Again, just being very gentle and easy on your neck. Noticing if you're holding on to some tension there. Coming back into the center. Let's go ahead and take your right arm across your body and just gently hug the arm in. So as I mentioned, if you're just joining us, we're going to work on balance today, tonight. You know, trying to restore a little bit of balance to us physically, mentally, emotionally. Because during this, this unusual time of the virus that we're all going through, 
our lives are out of balance. We're just, you know, not doing what we normally do. Maybe we're not even eating the same way that we normally eat. So things are just a little off. So tonight we're just going to focus particularly on balance. Then we'll do the other side. Take the arm across and stretch. Drop your shoulder down. And then release. Interlace your fingers. Draw your arms up. Take a big stretch. Drop your shoulders down. Pull your ribs in. And then left hand comes to the floor, right arm lifts up, and you're going to come on over to your left side, keeping your right hip on the ground. Start to turn your ribs and your belly up. And then as you release, take your right hand behind your back, left arm across the top of your knee, and take an easy twist. So it's the first twist of the evening, so don't force anything. Just be gentle on your body. And then come around to the center. Walk your hands forward. Take an easy bow here, letting your head bow down and weight into your legs. And use your hands to walk you up. Sit nice and tall. Leave your right hand on the side. Lift your left arm up. And then come on over for a side stretch. Wherever that stretch is for you. So if you want a little more stretch, you can walk your hand further out and bend your elbow. Just lowering down to where it feels comfortable, but also where your hip doesn't roll off the ground. So keep your hip rooted. Start to look up towards the ceiling. And then release, left hand comes behind your back, right arm comes around, and take an easy twist. And then turn back around to the front and take one more easy bow. And then use your hands to help walk you up. Extend your feet straight out in front. Pull your toes back and forth a few times. Just stretch out your legs. I'm going check to my, check my comments to make sure that I'm not missing anything I need to know about. Hi, Anderson. <laughs> so yeah, feel free to leave some comments if you want. And then roll your feet different directions. All right, let's come on over onto all fours, onto your hands and knees. You're going to take your wrists underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Draw back into your child's pose again. Stretch your back. And then inhale and begin to lift yourself forward. Bring your right foot up between your hands and you're going to roll forward in your hip, watching that that knee stays right over your heel. Hug your legs towards each other. So inner thighs hug in. And then walk backwards. Straighten your front leg. A little bit of a bend in your front knee as you lower your chest over. And then slide your right foot back and take your left foot up between your hands. Walk your hands forward and find your hip opener on this side. Lift your chest, squeeze your legs gently towards each other. And then opening up through your right hip flexor. And then use your hands to walk yourself back. Lift your toes up, keep your left knee soft, and lower your chest over the leg. And now slide your left leg back and find tabletop again. So wrists underneath your shoulders, knees under your hips. 
Find angry cat. Your spine comes up towards the ceiling. Chin into your chest. And just pressing those hands down into the ground. And then melt through. Come into your cow. So let your belly hang down. Arch your back. Working the back of your head towards your tailbone. And then table. So pull everything up into the middle of your body so you feel straight like a table, like you could balance something on your back. And then extend your right foot on the ground, put your toes on the ground, and then reach your heel out. So you're stretching through your calf muscle. And let's switch to the other side. So we're just gonna extend the left leg out, toes on the ground, press out through your heel, and stretch through your calf muscle. Nice, everyone. Now we got the legs stretched out. Let's come into downward dog. So walk your hands a few inches forward. Keep your toes turned under. And you're going to lift up into downward facing dog. Hips will reach up to the sky. And you can adjust your feet where you need to be. So we do want to look down and see that our feet are hip distance apart. And we want our hands, shoulders width apart. You're going to push your hands into the ground to reach your hips way back. Good. Now walk your feet. Take as many steps as you need. Come up to the top of your mat. And you're just going to hang forward in a forward fold. Tip your hips up to the sky. Let your head just hang for a moment. If it's hard to get your hands all the way on the ground, bend your knees as much as you need to. And if you want to make this stretch a little more, you can grab hold of opposite elbows and hang over. Let's switch this. Music something a little... More energetic here. And then relax your hands to the ground. Take an inhale. Pull your belly up and in as you rise all the way up. Stretch. Reach tall. Good. Now let's bring our palms together. Pull your ribs in and then lean over to your right side. Take a half moon stretch. Opening through your whole side body. And then inhale, lift up. And we'll come over to the other side. Keep your ribs pulling in, chin off your chest, and open side body. Ah, oh, it should feel nice. And then inhale, lift. Open your arms, take a big dive all the way down. Wrap your arms around your legs. Pull yourself in. Give yourself a hug here. We don't get to hug very often anymore, so we gotta hug ourselves. So pull yourself in, hug towards the middle of your body so outer hips hug in and then release your arms inhale and reverse your dive lift back up all the way to the top hands to your heart pause all right step to the top of your mat and we'll go through a few sun salutations to get us warmed up so we're gonna inhale, reach the arms up tall. On your exhale, dive to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. So for most of us, a nice place to be is fingers on the shin. Lift your head out, pull your ribs in. If you've got a lot of flexibility in your hamstrings, you can go ahead and leave your fingers on the floor. But again, most of us, a good option is right here on your shin. So let's take an inhale, lengthen on our spine. Exhale and fold, and then step back into your plank pose. So take two steps or several steps, whatever you need, to find plank. In your plank pose, your shoulders are just a hair in front of your wrists. Pull your belly up and reach out through your heels. Crown of the head reaches straight forward. If that's too much tonight, knees on the ground is always a great option for you to move towards. Take an inhale. And on your exhale, lower down to the ground. Untuck your toes. Inhale, lift up for cobra. So lift your shoulders up to your ears and then roll them down your back. Hug your elbows in. And you don't have to lift this high. 
You can come lower if that feels better. If you want to lift all the way up, that's great. Just don't lock your elbows. Keep some bend there. And then release, chest down to the ground. Push off the floor. Find downward facing dog. Hips up. Use your hands to push your hips way back. Stretch. You should feel this stretch along the sides of your body, through your low back, all the way down the back of your legs. And so inhale up on your toes. Exhale, bend your knees. Let's start off with just some small steps. Take lots of little steps. Walk your feet to the top of your mat. Boop. There goes my speaker. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, and fold. Rise with your breath. Come all the way up. Inhale. Hands to your heart. Exhale. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, float all the way down to the ground. Halfway lift. Plant your hands on the ground and step back into your plank pose. Exhale as you lower down to the ground. Untuck your toes. Inhale and lift up. Cobra. Exhale and release. Push off the ground. Downward facing dog. Reach up. Big stretch back. Now let's just pause for a moment to let our hips sway side to side. Explore this pose. Enjoy this pose. That's why we're here after all. And then lift up onto your toes. And you can take your right foot, step up between your hands, and then your left foot. If that's too much, take those small steps. Halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Rise with your breath. Come all the way up, big stretch. Hands to your heart, exhale. Let's do that again, inhale, lift up. Exhale, dive down to the floor. Halfway lift, inhale. Plant your hands on the ground, come back into your plank pose. Exhale as you lower down to the ground. Untuck your toes, inhale, lift up for your cobra. Exhale and release. Push off the ground. Downward facing dog. Reach up, hips up. Ah, nice big breath. Let's just hold it here for a few breaths. Let your back of your neck feel long. You can shake your head out a little. Ah, breathe. So again, we have a couple options. You can take several little steps, two big steps, or if you want, you can hop. Lift up onto your toes, bend your knees, walk, step, or hop your feet, top of the mat. Halfway lift, inhale, exhale, and fold. Rise all the way up, inhale, stretch tall. And then hands to your heart. Pause for a moment, do a quick check-in, see how you're feeling. Breathe through your posture. I think I need that there. All right, let's do that continuously. So we're going to inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, dive to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift. Step your feet back to your plank pose. Exhale and lower down. Inhale, open your heart up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale up on your toes, bend your knees, hop, step, or walk your feet, top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Breath carries you all the way up to the top again. Inhaling, hands to your heart. Exhale. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift up. Exhale and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on the ground, plank pose. Exhale as you lower to the ground. Inhale carries you up. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhale up on your toes. Bend your knees. Hop, step, or walk your feet to the top. Halfway lift. Inhale. Exhale and fold. Breath carries you up. Inhaling as you come all the way up to the top. Hands to your heart, pause. All right, we've done Surya Namaskar A. Let's move into Surya Namaskar B. 
So that's going to double the amount of breath and work in our sun salutations. If you're finding that's too much, just come back and do sun salutation A, what we just did, or modify and just stay in downward dog for a few breaths. So we're, to do this, we're going to come back into our mountain pose and then dropping your hips, you're going to come into chair pose. So bend your knees and drop down in a chair. Good. So keep your belly lifted, shoulders down your back. Good. Now straighten, reach tall, and now dive off. Exhaling your breath as you come all the way down. Inhale, lift your head. Step back into your plank pose. Exhale, maybe chaturanga. That's a whole body hover. Don't let your shoulders drop lower than your elbows, though. Keep them up. If that's too much, floor's great. Untuck your toes. And you're either in cobra, hips, knees are on the ground, or if you want upward facing dog, thighs are off the ground. You can always choose which of those options works best for you. Good, lift and roll back, downward facing dog. <sighs> All right, so I like to teach more traditional Ashtanga flow. So we're not going to lift the leg behind us. You're actually going to turn your left heel in towards the center of your right foot. And then pick your right foot up and step between your hands. Do your best. Use your right hand if you need to. Bending that right knee. Inhale and lift up into your warrior one. Virabhadrasana one. And then release hands to the floor. Right leg comes back. Lower down through your vinyasa, your choice, either all the way or not. Downward facing dog. Good. So this time we're going to turn our right foot in. Step your left foot up between your hands. Inhale and rise up. Exhale, taking your hands to the floor. And come back into your plank pose. Lowering down, exhale. Inhale, scoop your heart up. Elbows soft, downward facing dog. Good, inhale up on your toes, exhale, bend your knees, hop, step, or walk your feet to the top of the mat. Good, so this is a little bit different here. Instead of coming all the way up, bend your knees, inhale to your chair pose again. So we're right where we started, we're gonna end there, come back. Press through the legs, inhale, straighten up, Circle your hands, bring them back to your heart center, pause. Let's try that one more time. Inhale, bend your knees. Exhale, straighten and fold to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on the ground, step back. That's all on that inhale. Now, exhale as you lower down, chaturanga the floor. Inhale, heart lifts. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Right foot makes a quick step up between your hands. Inhale, palms touch. Exhale, and you come right back down to the floor. As soon as your hands hit the floor, the leg comes back, and you keep exhaling as you lower through your vinyasa. Inhale, opening your chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left foot makes a quick step up between your hands. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, come on back down. Left foot comes back and you exhale all the way down. Inhale, because you need the breath now. Exhale, carries you back into downward dog. Inhale, up on your toes, bend your knees, hop step or walk your feet. Knees bent, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, straighten and circle the hands around to your heart. Pause. Catch your breath. So you may notice a little more breath work there, working a little harder in that vinyasa flow. Let's try that again. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose. Exhale, straighten and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on the ground. Come back to plank pose. Exhale and lower. Inhale, heart lifts. Exhale, roll through your body, downward dog. Inhale, right foot steps up, left heel down. Rise up, inhaling all the way up. 
exhale, hands to the floor. Keep exhaling as you lower down through Chaturanga. Inhale, lift the heart up. Exhale, downward dog. Left foot, quick step up by your hands. Inhale, rise up. Exhale and lower. Left foot back, lower through your vinyasa. Upward dog, downward dog. Inhale, rise up onto the toes. Bend the knees, hop step or walk your feet. Halfway lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Breath carries you all the way to chair pose. Bend your knees, drop your hips. Now straighten up, hands to your heart. Close your eyes, do a quick check in. Notice how you're feeling after a few sun salutations. So if you feel winded, that's pretty common. Then a lot of the challenge with this is learning the breath work. And it just takes a little bit of practice to get the inhales and the exhales and everything to, to work in the right way. All right, let's see if this will stay on. Maybe that's falling off. <laughs> All right, let's do some standing poses. What do you think? Sure, Susan, let's do it. Let's do Vira Madrasana 1, Warrior 1. So we're going to take your right foot forward and your left foot back. Take your hands to your hip and draw your hips around to the front. So you may have to do a few adjustments to get that so you feel like you're square to the front, to the top of your mat. Bend your right knee and readjust your hip. <laughs> Bend your right knee and readjust your hip. Now, bring all of your focus to your back foot, your left foot. Can you spread the whole little toe side of your foot on the ground? Can you lift the inner arch of your left foot, the inside of your ankle up? Good, readjust your hips. Bottom ribs, like they're knitting in front of you, they're rubbing together here. So you're pulling the ribs in, belly back. Hands either at your heart or if you want, you can lift those hands up, find your breath, Virabhadrasana one. If you like to take the arch, that's fine. Just lift that arch up between your shoulder blades so we're not crunching in our low back here. We're trying to lift the arch and the key is ribs in and reach back slightly. Good, so I said we were working on balance. Let's move into some balance. We're gonna gently lean forward, hold it right here, work this right hip in, back, and down so it's not working out to the side. Stay here, or if you wanna play with balance, you're gonna shift the weight into your right foot and let your left leg float off the ground and find your warrior three or scale pose. Keep working your right hip back keeping your hips level across, toes to the floor on your left foot. Got another inhale, exhale all of your breath, and then inhale to stand. Ooh, and say hello to your right hip, hands to your heart, exhale. All right, right leg steps back. Let's do that on the other side. So adjust hips forward. Bend your left knee, readjust your hips, ribs back. Good, back foot, again, the outside of your ankle hugs out. The inside lifts up. So you feel like a dome in the arch of your foot. Keep working your hips forward belly in, hands either at your heart, or you can lift them up if you like. You can also clasp them and take a bigger pose. Ribs in, bend the knee, feel the strength in your legs. Take another inhale, and then on your exhale, lean forward. Left hip, tuck it back and in, hug both of your outer hip muscles towards your tailbone. Good, stay here or shift more weight into your left foot so that you can lift the right leg off the ground and find your balance. Just do what you can. No judgment, we're just playing here. 
Good, then step your feet together. Inhale, reach the arms up, stretch tall. Hands to your heart, pause. Stay here or move through one, sun A, so you can lift the arms up. Exhale, float down. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands to the floor, come back into your plank pose. Exhale and lower, chaturanga or the floor. Upward dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Back into your pose. Rise up onto your toes, bend your knees, hop, step, or walk your feet. Halfway lift. Fold on your exhale. Inhale, carries you up to the top. Hands to your heart. And pause. All right, I'm just going to turn this direction so you can see a little bit better. So we're going to leave our right foot forward. Step your left foot back for your warrior two. So feet are nice and wide, hugging the heels in. Extend the arms out. So it's like you're hugging everything in the center of your body. We're talking about balance. And our pelvis is where our balance resides. So sometimes when we can't balance, it's often because our hips are out of alignment. So we want in this pose to be right in the center. Work this inside of your thigh like you could lift it up and over your leg. Shoot your right knee straight out. Left leg, give yourself a little karate chop right here so that you're working the top of that bone back into your hip. Good. And then stretch out through the outside edge of your heel for your warrior two. Take another inhale here. On your exhale, come over into side angle pose. So some of you might want to rest your arm right on top of your leg. That's great. If you can bring your hand easily to the floor, you can take it on down to the ground. So that left arm can reach straight up, or if you want more of a stretch, you can reach it over the top of your head. So keep pulling your ribs in, belly in, and looking underneath your left arm. Breathe. Steady, smooth breath. Can you bend your knee maybe an inch more? Can you tuck your right hip underneath you maybe a little more? Good. Now press into your right foot. Inhale and rise up. Back into your warrior two. Good. Now straighten that front leg. Triangle pose, trikonasana. Extend the right arm out and tilt down. Let your hands land organically wherever they want to land. A good place is right below your knee. If you can come down, come on down a little bit more. But keep your chest working back. Good. Trikonasana, triangle pose. See so if you can visualize your body in a triangle. So from your top fingers all the way down to your foot, cross the floor, and back up makes a triangle shape. Good. Now let's inhale. Rise up out of our pose. Awesome. Turn both feet in so you have a wide stance. Bring your hands to your hips. Pull your elbows back. Good. Take an inhale. Open your chest. And then on your exhale, fold right here. Let your head hang towards the ground. Does not need to touch the ground. It might, but it doesn't need to touch the ground at all. Put more weight into your toes, lift your tailbone up. And then if your legs are super tight, just bend your knees. Bring some ease into the pose. Good, press into your big toes. Inhale and begin to slowly lift your upper body. Making sure you're bringing breath in. If you feel dizzy, just pause for a moment and breathe. Good. And let's rotate our feet to the other direction. So go ahead and turn your left foot out, keeping your right foot turned slightly in. Bending that left knee, coming back into your warrior two, Virabhadrasana B. And so you're going to gaze over your middle finger on your left hand. Again, this hip bone, work it back into your hip joint. Feel the work in your ankle of that back leg. Take an inhale 
On your exhale, tilt slightly forward and find your Parshvakanasana side angle pose. So we keep bending this leg, but eventually working down to a right angle here. If that's difficult, just do what you can. Top arm lifts up or maybe over your head. Bottom arm rests on the leg or maybe to the floor. Where is the pose feel nice in your body? So we're working on balance tonight. And so one of the questions of balance is there's a balance between the ease and the effort in our yoga poses. So we want to find that balance. We don't want the pose to be so easy that, you know, we're just kind of hanging out here, our minds wandering all over the place. But we don't want the pose to be so challenging that you're like, oh, I can't wait to get out of this pose. So we're trying to find the balance between the ease and the effort in each one of our postures. Press into that front foot, inhale, come back on up into your warrior two, and then straighten your front leg. Triangle pose, Trikonasana. Extend out, again, let your hand land organically wherever it feels comfortable. And if it's too much to lift your top arm, hand on your hip is a great place to be. Maybe slide down a little bit more. Check out your left knee, make sure there's some softness there and that leg's not super straight. Ah, and breathe. And again, just maybe feel, where is this pose opening in your body? Where does it feel nice? And where can you find that balance between the ease and the effort? You feel the work, but it's not so difficult that you couldn't stay here for a couple of breaths. Good. Rise up out of your pose. Nice and easy. All right. Let's come back into the center. This time, turn both feet out. Bend your knees and drop down. Good. Hands can come to your heart. If you want a little more work today, you can lift those arms up over the top. Keep your knees working back, ribs working back. And as if your heels have magnets attached to them. So you're working your heels without moving your feet towards each other. Breathe. Again, find the balance between effort and ease in this pose. What helps you stay in the pose? What helps you keep your mind present in this pose? Good. Slowly straighten your legs. Whew, feel the work. I do. <laughs> and then release down. All right. Step to the top of your mat. I'm going to stay facing this way. It's a little easier. I can see you all. Hands to your heart. Breathe. All right. Let's balance. Tree balance. So you're going to put all of your effort into your left foot. It's like you're sending roots down into the ground. Spread your toes. And then let's lift the right leg up. So right leg can lift as high as you want to go. So maybe you can just leave your big toe on the floor, especially if you're on an uneven surface and you're already feeling wobbly. Just toe on the ground. You can just work in your breath. Maybe you can slide that foot up to the inside of your calf. Maybe you want to lift that foot a little higher any place but the inside of your knee. So you want to keep that free. Good. And then hands at your heart, or perhaps you want to play with making a bigger tree. Arms can be up or out to the side. And then find that action of pushing your leg into your foot and your foot into your leg. So this is working in here. Your, everything is hugging in. It's giving you stability, like a tree trunk here. And then if you have something that you can gaze at, something that's not moving, keep your eyes in one place and that will help you also with your balance. Another breath here, inhale, and then exhale, release everything down. Finding your mountain pose, the balance of the mountain, the power of the mountain. And let's do the other side. So we're going to switch into the right foot. Spread your toes. Bring your left foot to the inside of your ankle or maybe a little higher. Or if you like, you can take it all the way up to the top if that's in your practice and available for you. And then hands wherever you're feeling tonight. Make yourself into a tree. 
since I have so much time at home now, I've been spending a lot of time in my backyard. Uh, and it's just kind of funny because, you know, you, the old saying, if you're watching grass grow, I literally have been watching the trees in my backyard begin to bloom. It's crazy. Just a few days ago, there was nothing on the branches. And then there's these little tiny buds. And now oh, I'm starting to see some color. I'm starting to see some leaves. So finding that within yourself tonight, let yourself bloom. It's spring or almost spring. Got to take another inhale and then exhale, release down. All right, bring your hands to your heart. You're either going to stay here or move through one sun A just to keep your body warm. Arms are going to reach up. Exhale, dive down to the ground. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on the ground, step back to your plank pose. Exhale and lower. Inhale, open your chest. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, up on your toes. Bend your knees, hop, step, or walk your feet, top of the mat. Halfway lift. And then fold. Rise with your breath. Let it carry you all the way back to the top. And then hands to your heart. Pause. All right, let's play with dancer's pose. Dance is a balance pose as well. I think the best way, maybe I should turn sideways so you can see better. Yep. All right. So for bent, just like we did in our tree pose, this is a one-legged pose. So you're going to bend your right leg and catch it with your right hand. But you wanna to try to catch on the inside of your foot. If that's not possible, outside's fine, but you wanna flip your hand back and see, can you catch the inside? Why? Because you're lifting that leg up. And so when your shoulder is open, you can lift the arm. When your hand is this way, you can't lift the arm. The shoulder gets stuck there. So again, flip your palm, grab the inside of your foot. Now, bring everything back to center. So turn your chest forward again, turn your hips forward so you feel square with the top of your mat. Good, now left arm can be balanced. You can do that by extending the arm out or you can leave it on your hip. We're gonna gently kick into the foot and reach out for our dancer's pose. Now you don't have to make this huge, just be where you are. Find dancer's pose. Keep lifting the toe up, keep working your chest forward, belly in. Another inhale, and then exhale, release. Step your feet together, pause. All right, we'll do the other side. So drop your left hand down, bend your left leg, and catch it on the inside. Again, if that's difficult, don't worry about it. You can always do the outside. If you find this whole thing is just like, I can't do this at all, then come back and do tree pose, okay? So next thing you wanna work on, I've already talked about bringing everything square, but this outside, your left leg, it likes to flare up. See if you can drop the knee down. Yep, now, hip square, chest square. Other arm can be balanced. You're gonna kick into your hand and lift it up. Keep lifting, lifting, lifting. Keep your chest lifting as well. So you're working an arch in your back. It's also a tremendous stretch for your left shoulder. So you wanna keep working that left shoulder forward, left hip forward, and then work your toes. Maybe one day, toes pop up over behind your head. Breathe. You gotta take another inhale, and then on your exhale, let's come out of our pose and shake it out. All right, awesome. So remembering in your balance poses, it's easy to get frustrated, especially if you catch yourself you know, wobbling all over the place. It's important to remember a couple things. First of all, remember that you learn to balance by falling. I mean, think back, if you have young children, you, you witness this, but as a young child, how many times did you fall? Now, you probably don't remember when you were learning to walk, but you fell many times. But you probably do remember when you learned how to ride a bike. 
you know, uh, the feeling of being balanced on your bike and the feeling of falling. That's how we learn to balance is we fall. <laughs> so it's okay if we fall. It's totally fine. All right. So let's try one more balance. Let's, um, let's see what I want to try. Uh, let's work on um, figure four. So we're going to put all of the weight into our left foot. You're going to lift your right leg up and just capture your knee here. Let's just start here with this balance. To help the balance, you're going to flex your right foot and aim your right heel towards the ground. Drop your right hip, pull your belly and ribs in, and try to be steady here. We'll take this pose in stages. You can stop whatever stage that you would like to stop at, and it might be right here. If you want to carry on, move to the next stage, we're going to work our right leg across the top of our left thigh. Knee opens out if you can hands to your heart and just a little bit of a bend so that you drop down into this. Good. You can stay here. If you want to continue working on the journey, can you go deeper? Maybe bringing your elbows to the top of your knee and the top of your ankle. Lift your belly. Breathe. Good. If you want to continue more on this journey, hands might reach to the floor. If you get to the floor, start to straighten your support leg and bow in this pose. It's a big stretch for your right hip. Good. Take another breath here. Exhale it out. And then on your next inhale, you're going to lift slowly out of your pose. Just come out of that with as much grace as you went into it, much balance, and release. You might feel some work in your left hip. Breathe. All right, let's do figure four on the other side. So starting off, you're just going to hold on to your left shin. Flex your left foot. Work your heel towards the floor. Lift your chest. Spread across your collarbones. All right, coming into figure four. So we're going to gently take that leg across the top. Take your time. There's no rush. Maybe drop that knee towards the ground if you can. If it wants to sit up here, that's fine. Just listen to your body. But we're working to let it drop down. Maybe one day getting your knee and your ankle in the same plane. Hands to your heart. Flex your left foot. Keeping this foot flexed helps this knee. Good. Now pull your ribs up and then draw your hips back as you start to sink in this pose, wherever you can go. Remembering you learn to balance by falling. <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, that's how we learn to balance. Want to bring your hands to the floor, start to straighten the support leg, bow your head. And then with an inhale, begin to lift up. And then release all back to center. Good. Again, now feel the work in that right hip. All right, let's separate our feet wider than our hips. And you're going to bend down for a yoga squat. So if you have any kind of issues in your knee, you can come right here. Let your hands balance, or sorry, your elbows balance on top of your knees. If it's okay in your hips and knees to come all the way down in a yoga squash, your knees back. I feel that great stretch in your low back. Ah, breathe right here. This is a great, feels good to me. All right, take your hands to the floor, walk them out, bow right here. And then lift up, bring your hands back to your heart. If you want just a little bit more work, arms can reach up in this pose. We're going to take it all the way to the top. Here we go. One, two, three. Stand up. Oh, yes. All right. Turn your toes slightly in, heels out. Dive down. 
two fingers grab your big toes pull your elbows out to the side top of your head work straight down to the ground tilt forward so you have more weight in your feet than you do in your heels Good. and then plant your hands on the ground and take two steps back into downward facing dog. So you're gonna come on back, uh, just enjoy that stretch, reach your hips up. Let's check my time. Okay. All right, let's put some of these actions together and we're gonna play with a balance pose. Play is the word I want you to focus on. You don't, it's not about getting the pose, it's just about the journey of getting to the pose that we wanna focus on. So first, let's come into plank pose. So we're gonna shift forward, shoulders over our wrist, pull your belly up and in. And again, just take a quick look down. You do want your shoulders to be just slightly forward so you can use your toes to push forward. Too much, knees on the ground. Pull your abs up super strong. Now, right leg is gonna come up right in the center of your chest. You're gonna find cat pose, arch up, and pull that leg straight up into your body. Good, step back, lengthen out. Let's do the other side. Pull up like cat pose. So arch between your shoulders up towards the ceiling. Pull your left knee in and then use your abdominal muscles to really pull that leg up and in. Good. Step back. Lift your hips. Downward dog. Ah, and breathe. All right. I'm going to turn sideways again or forward so you can see more. Everybody else, walk your feet up to the outside of your hands, just like we did a moment ago in our yoga squat. That same action, contracting, pulling our belly up and in to hold that knee right in the center of your body. You're going to use that same work, if you will, in your crow balance. So for crow, you're going to bring your hands to the ground, come up onto your heels, and you're trying to get your tricep muscles where your shins are. So you gotta get low, down low, reach back with your arms so that you're getting your tricep muscles onto your shins. This might be your stop. This might be you're like, okay, this is good. I got here, stay here. You wanna be solid, you wanna work in this pose. So if you're not feeling ready to move on, don't. Just stay here, baby steps. Next week, you can try a different pose or move on. So right here, you got your, your triceps are making connection with your shins, okay? Pull your belly up, just like you did a moment ago. Pull your belly up super strong. Lean forward and put some weight into your hands. Really spread your fingers, claw your hips into the ground. Now, of course, if you already know this pose, go ahead. I can't see you, so go ahead and do your crow balance. But if you're working towards it, let's just first start on getting some weight into our hands. If you're feeling like, okay, I can, I can do this, then maybe get enough weight in your hands that you can lift one foot off the floor and the other foot off the floor. Maybe you just lift one foot off, but you're working for an arm balance. I'm gonna turn sideways. So play a little bit in your crow balance. Try to avoid lifting your hips really high. I know it's a kind of human nature. We think if we get our hips way up here, then I can get my feet off the ground. But all that does is just throw all your weight forward. So instead of that, get low, lift up the center of your back. Make like you're a turtle, like you've got a turtle back. You're rounding your hard shell up. Pull your belly up into your turtle shell. That's gonna help you balance. So the more I use my abs, the more I round my back up, the easier it is to get my feet to float off the floor. Good, give it a play. And then step back into your downward facing dog. Oh, stretch it out. If you're like, oh, I need more than downward dog to relax, come on down and take an easy child's pose here. Either one's good. Store up your energy. We're gonna do one more for fun play balance. We're gonna combine our standing balance with our crow balance. All 
All right. So let's stand up again. All right. I think the best way to do this. I'm going to turn this way. <laughs> Which side? All right. Figure four. We already did this pose. So we're going to lift up our right leg, cross to the top of our left leg. Hands to your heart. You might stay here. This is great. You're working on balance. If you want a little more work, drop down into a deeper figure four. If you want to take this on the next part of the journey, you can bring your hands to the floor. It's hard to find the right angle here. <laughs> I'm like, I want to show you so many things. All right, so if you have your hands on the floor, your legs are in figure four, your right foot hugs your left tricep. I don't know if you all can see that. Uh, but use your right toes to hold on to your tricep muscle. Okay? Now, if you want to take this even further, you're going to come down deeper. So I have my left knee bent. I got my right foot around and it's hugging on. I'm, I can push my toes into that arm. Okay? So now you're just going to do the same thing that you would do in your crow balance. But you've got one leg that's bound across. Can you lift your support leg off the floor? That's what you're working for. Give it some play. Those of you who are a little more advanced, if you get that foot off the floor, you're going to start to shoot that foot out behind you like a big tail. All right, let's try the other side. I know it's, it's challenging, but that's, that's just kind of the fun of it. So yoga, you know, gives us just enough um, reward, if you will, to keep us interested in the practice. And it gives us just as much challenge to, you know, keep us motivated to do more. So there's that, again, that balance uh, in our postures. So let's try the other side. So you're going to take your left foot across the top of your right thigh, sit back into your chair pose. You might stay right here. You might drop deeper. You might take your hands to the floor. You might bend your right leg and come down into a squat. Hug your legs in. Maybe, just like you would in crow, you gotta create that ledge. Maybe lift the bottom foot. Maybe kick the foot out. And then release out of your pose into a downward facing dog. <sighs> oh, that was fun. There's always fun to do some fun things. All right, come on down into child's pose. Bring your knees to the floor. I'm gonna check my time because I'll go too long if I don't. Perfect. All right, you're in child's pose. Drop down. Lift up enough in your child's pose to slide your right shoulder underneath you. Crawl your left fingers over the top of your head. And then let's do the other side. So we're going to lift up enough to slide your left arm underneath you, right arm over the top. And then lifting yourself up. It's like a quick hero's pose just to stretch out our thighs. So in hero's pose, we're sitting between our heels. So you can walk your feet out and work your hips down. Now, if you're, this puts too much stress in your knees, grab a pillow and sit on that pillow. Put it between your feet. Another option, if you don't have a prop nearby, I like to do a lot, sometimes if this is too much on my knees, is I'll just make two fists and put my fists into the balls of my feet, straighten your arms, and you can use your arms to adjust how deep you want to go in this pose. 
Now your knees don't have to be together here, but you do want them to both face forward. So if they're splayed way out, can you gently bring them forward so that your knees are in line with your hips at least? And then you're just working to try to sit between your legs. So your hips on the inside of your heel in this pose. And of course, if you feel any kind of pain in your knee, come out of the pose. It's okay to feel a little bit of a stretch, but you shouldn't feel like sharp shooting pains in your knee or your hips for that matter. Now, some of you might be a little bit more flexible and you can walk yourself back and even lay down in this pose. What's going to give you the best stretch right here in your quad? That's what you want to find. So just take a moment here. Find your breath. Sink into the pose and just feel where it's working for you. Where do you feel some space? Where do you feel a nice stretch? So this is what I would consider a balancing pose for yoga. I know that sounds kind of weird. What? We're not balancing in this pose. But we are balancing out our practice. A lot of time in yoga, we do a lot of the hamstring stretches, the backs of our legs. We stretch our, our calves. We stretch our hamstrings. Every time we bend over forward, um, you know, when we're doing our standing poses through our sun salutations, we're using our hamstrings a lot. So to balance that, we do a pose like this, where we get that nice stretch in our quad. There's a couple others we could do, but this is a nice one to end our class with. So we're balancing the work we do in the back of our leg with the work on the front of the leg. Good. So we've been here for a little bit of time. So you might feel stiff. So take your time when you come out of that. The old saying is the pose works when you're coming out. <laughs> so you might feel it in this pose in particular. And then take a seat, extend your legs straight out in front of you. And then I like to just rub my knees after that. Kind of just give them an easy, gentle massage. Maybe take some fist pumps into your thighs. And then all the way down your legs. And then just find an easy forward fold. And then roll down onto your back. We're going to take a recline twist. Draw your knees into your chest. And then extend your arms straight out from your shoulders. You can turn your palms up if you need a little more energy. If you want to ground more, bring your palms towards the earth. Good. So let's take the right leg. You're going to cross it over your left. If this is too much in your low back, just uncross. So you're going to cross that leg over and then let both knees fall gently over onto the left side. My kitty is going to join us for our last part of our <laughs> practice. I don't know what it is about yoga, but every time I get on my mat, they have to come play. And then we'll come back into the center. Switch across to the other side. So left leg over the right. And then take both legs over to the right side. And once you get there, let everything relax. If it's pinching in your low back, uncross your legs to lessen that slightly. And then back into the center. And then go ahead and extend your legs straight down. Bring your hands along the side of your body and then just surrender onto the floor. Finding your final pose, your Shavasana. Take a breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. So like a sigh, let it go. And again, inhaling a breath. Exhaling it all the way out. And then relax your legs. Relax your arms. Try to smooth out any tension that you're holding on to in your face. 
especially in your jaw, in your neck. Let your shoulders relax. With your mind, circulate through your whole body. Just feel the effects of your practice tonight. Balance out even in your Shavasana. So allow your right leg to feel as heavy as your left leg. And your right arm to feel as heavy as your left arm. Let your right eye sink back into your eye socket. And then let your left eye sink back. Perhaps see if you can even feel the breath balance. So that you inhale and exhale in the same duration of time. Sometimes it's helpful to even count. Inhale, one, two, three three, four, exhale, four, three, two, one. Just take a moment. Be in your Shavasana. Allowing this practice to let you feel balanced. So of course you are at home. You are more than welcome to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you would like to tonight. I do like to finish this out though, so you can stay in your Shavasana or maybe bring your hands up to your heart. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all know peace and may our words, thoughts, and actions contribute to that peace in some way. May we use this practice to help us to find balance in our own lives so that we can share that balance with others. Thank you so much for practicing with me on behalf of Sunwater Spa. I look forward to the day and we can practice again in person and I can see your lovely faces. But until then, Keep tuning in and joining us here online. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste, everyone.